Today I'm chatting with Jeremy Lekic, who through Nashville Foodscapes offers creative food solutions through landscaping. Jeremy talks about how he went from being a kid who spent too much time playing video games to finding his passion of growing food. He's now turning lawns into bountiful living spaces that please the eyes and taste buds and helps people connect with their food source. He also has a band, Turnip the Beat. I'm Tai Chi. At 19, I was a superstar and I was lost inside. I left it all behind, switched continents and started all over. Years later, I found myself lost again, this time in the American dream. This is a story about awakening, about living the life you were created for, about going inward and discovering the joyous and purposeful person you and I are both meant to be. This is Waking Up in America. Here we are in uh, Green, Green Hills, right? Mm -hmm. This is a neighborhood in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm talking to Jeremy Lekic. What a pleasure to have you on Waking Up in America. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. So one place where, you know, I think we can all trigger the awakening, whether we want to trigger some big shift in our lives that might be harder because it's harder to tap into, you know, maybe spiritual awakenings or, or, or even, you know, getting out of some habit that we've been in for a long, long time or maybe... A, a, a situation, maybe even depression or, or things like that. And it's harder to tap into the triggers that can help us make that shift. Mm -hmm. and one place where I think we have this gift that we forget about, where we can trigger that connection is earth, nature, um, the beauty, because yep. we see the creation, we see the life in it. And that's why I'm so grateful that you are on the show. And I'm grateful for what you do, because that's what you bring to our world, this opportunity to reconnect mm -hmm. with what feeds us. I want to know, how did you find, how did you get into it? Tell us your uh, life before this shift that happened in your life. Well, I grew up in suburban Nashville, you know, suburban America, played a lot of video games. Mm. Um, went to public school, you know, and just sat in a classroom for hours on end, you know, being asked to regurgitate a bunch of information. Um, really didn't come out of school with any skills or much knowledge of the outdoor world, you know. I couldn't have named one bird or one plant, probably. And so I grew up, as a lot of people now are growing up and have for the last, you know, couple of decades. Yeah, um, you're basically describing what, what my kids' reality is. Right. A lot of people. School, indoors, video games. Yep. Hours of video games. The yep. internet. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. Hours and hours. I think about if I would have spent those hours doing something like learning carpentry or playing music, I would be, you know, an amazing carpenter or an amazing musician. But... You know, I've beaten a couple of video games. But there's a lot of video <laughs> gamers out there who do say there's great benefits in it. Sure. Like, so... Sure, I mean, yeah, I mean, s certainly, you know, I learned some strategic stuff from playing video games, but, you know... But it's really, I think, what you're, you're saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, the balance... Oh, totally, the balance is, is okay. off. And, I mean, we can, we can justify playing video games and say that there's some <laughs> benefits to it, but really there's not many, you know. Right. There's a lot of disadvantages to it. And really it just comes down to, to you know, when you, when you are old enough to not play video games anymore and you look back at that time spent, mm. what do you have to show for it? Like when I say, oh, hey, I've, I've, I've beaten this game and this game, you know, there's only a handful of people that are going to be like, wow, that's cool, you know, and it's not going to really do much for my for my livelihood you know that's a great point great point thank you so. yes thank you for saying that you know that we look back and it's the time spent on what yeah, exactly and we keep the kids in the schools all right so here you are but that's a that's a good life on the outside there's nothing wrong he's a that's good right. kid your grades were good yeah my grades were real good there you go yep. good grades beat the video games, so you probably had good friends. And yeah, yeah, totally. Life looks beautiful on the outside, like a yeah. really nice ripe tomato that you buy 
the perfect one, right? Totally. In the pile in the store. And so, it was good. It was a good life. I mean, okay. I enjoyed it. Was, were you aware of anything then that it was anything missing or no? You were very young, we're talking. Mm -hmm. In high school, I, I felt the need to, I felt the need that I needed to do something more. You know, that, that there was something not quite right with, with really with the way that humans were, were treating the earth. Mm. You know, I, and I wasn't aware of the details, but the patterns were starting to emerge. You know, and the, the patterns were starting to say, hey, you know, maybe, maybe start thinking about how you want to be involved with earth care. Oh, interesting. And your parents' influence? Oh. Well, yeah, they did. They were of the hippie generation, you know, of the 60s and the 70s. So we didn't really have gardens too much, um, but they had that in their background. And there was definitely a, uh, an attitude of like, you know, hey, we need to treat nature with respect. You know, we are nature. Yes, yes, yes. And there was, there was a consciousness in what we ate, you mm -hmm. know. Oh, and by the way, your great grandmother comes from Serbia. That's correct, yeah. What a great connection we yeah, have. Yeah, totally. So maybe, in the, I mean, yes, because there is, I mean, naturally in us, we all have this awareness. We just mm -hmm. have disconnected from it. Yeah. So tell us the point where, where it shifted for you. I was in college, and I went to a small college called Warren Wilson College uh, near Asheville, North Carolina, in a little town called Swannanoa. Uh, in western North Carolina in the southern Appalachian Mountains, in the Blue Ridge chain, actually. Oh, it's beautiful there, isn't it? Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's magical. Yes. yes. And so it's a work college, so every student has to work 15 hours a week as part of the education, and the students run the school. They oh. clean the dishes, they clean the dorms, they run a lot of administrative offices. Why did you pick that school? I like the idea of going to a place, A, that was beautiful, you know, you walk through campus and you have, you know, you have to walk through the forest to get to class, which I just thought was amazing. And I like the idea of having, you know, go to class, then you go work, and then you go to class and you go work. Because I was already tired of my high school experience, which was, you know, eight hours of sitting in a classroom with, you know, an hour of... Recess. Of recess, yeah. So I was already getting tired of that. <laughs> so I was like, oh, what an awesome opportunity to be somewhere where, you know, that can shift a little bit. So I went to this school and ended up getting on the landscaping crew. We were talking about nature, and here we actually had to s uh, move our set a little bit because the sun moves. So we're moving with the sun, respecting our environment. Mm -hmm. So here we are, you're in college, you pick the college because it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you're studying biochemistry. And what was your, what were you thinking you were gonna, what were you, when you envision your future? Did you have any? Yeah, you know, my, my vision of my future was, was getting a biochemistry degree and then going to graduate school. I actually wanted to go to Denmark and, and you know, be in a lab and, and study, you know, biochemistry and do biochemical research. And Interesting, and, and, and that would put you right back inside. It would. Yeah, with a lot of machines. And so, you know, as I started studying biochemistry more and, and spent more time in the laboratory, you know, I was like, okay, is this really for me? And then, you know, I would get out of class and I would go work. And I was working landscaping and I ended up taking care of an edible landscape in front of one of the dorms. That when had, you say edible, yes. Yeah, so it had everything from almond trees to blackberries to kale, you know, to, to tasty edible and medicinal plants, flowers. And so I'm taking care of this garden and, and I'm just happier being outside in, in, that, in that garden, in that landscape. And then I would go into class and I'd be in the laboratory and I would you know, be around all these machines and I'd be like, ooh, I don't know if I can do this. And so finally I was like, I think I need to, I need to switch a different, to a different major, something that's gonna allow me to be outside because I loved getting my hands dirty. I loved having the sun on my skin and, I loved feeling the wind blow, and I loved hearing the, beer, the birds chirping and singing. Yeah. And, and I loved seeing the plants grow, and I loved learning all these mm. new plants. And so, and so I ended up switching to biology as a major, but then ke keeping chemistry as a minor because I'd already taken so many chemistry classes. Right. And I figured, you know, whatever I get into, it'd be nice to have the science behind me. So I did yes. that. You're already aware of how you feel, which is something a lot of people struggle with. Because mm. even if they feel something, then our minds are going to tell us, well, you know, it's not important what you, how you feel. It's important to get that degree, mm -hmm. to get to that position, because it's a lot better 
looks better to be a scientist or a doctor or whatever than work with dirt. How did you make that? I mean, mm. how did you, were, were you able, how you were, you were able to follow what your soul was telling you? Yeah, I struggled a lot. You did? I did, yeah. I, I went through a, a very turbulent time. Uh, uh, about sophomore going into junior uh, year in college. And, and I went and talked to the, the campus therapists a lot. You know, like what? And I, you know, I wasn't sure what it was. You know, I, I had, I was like, well, maybe it's this and maybe it's that. I, I was having a hard time figuring out why I was feeling so, you know, turbulent inside. And as I pushed through, I realized it was because I, you know, I needed to shed the ideas of what society said I should be. And I just had to be myself. Oh, beautiful. It was good. Yes. So part of it is that you were willing to work through it. Part of it is you had the support. Totally. Yeah. Mm. And talking about it, you know, yes. with friends, with, with the campus therapists, you know, with family, you know, just, just talking about it. Because the more I talked about it, the better I was able to articulate what was, what was going on. And then once I was able to articulate what was going on, I could then understand it and move forward with with understanding and then eventually compassion for myself (laughs) oh so important thank you for bringing that up yes compassion for yourself that's one thing we so so many of us fall short on yeah we we're just so hard on ourselves yeah so tell me now you've made the decision Mm -hmm. tell me about that connection with earth with with force with nature with food it's, it's very unusual for humans to not be aware of the natural surroundings. You know, what birds are around us, what plants are around us, what animals are around us. It's very unusual. And it's only in the last, you know, 50 to 100 years that all of a sudden we, we haven't had that connection. And at least for myself, when I go into the forest and I'm like, oh, that's a cardinal. Or, oh, I hear a whippoorwill in the distance. Or, oh, that's a sassafras tree. Um, or, oh, that's a, that's a ginseng plant. There's this connection, this, this like euphoria that within me that's like, you know, oh, these are my friends, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's really hard to describe. It's something that, you know, once people experience, I think they, they feel it. And, and I see it with lots of my clients, you know, once they become familiar with a plant in their yard or a garden vegetable or a fruit tree, there is this relationship that forms. Yes, and, and there's such disparity. You know, a lot of my viewers from Croatia or, or, or different parts of the world where that's, that connection is still exists. Totally. They will say, what do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. But then, you know, our, our kids in, in the States, there's so many kids I know who go to the grocery store, you produce, they don't even, they can't even identify yeah. what's there, what we eat. And I mean, let's not even talk about how the food that we eat don't even look like, doesn't even look like food, right? It's right, not yeah. food. A lot of it is not even That's right. natural food, which I have a huge, how do you say it? I have a beef with it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Terrible <yeah>. pun. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good so, one, actually. <laughs> so, so now what you do is you brought your awakening, you brought your passion, this connection to what you do today. Mm-hmm. And tell us about um, Nashville Foodscapes. Mm-hmm. So we, at the foundation, we educate people, our clients on, you know, on a superficial level, how to grow food, on a deeper level on how to reconnect with nature. Mm. Because I think that growing food is a great step in reconnecting with nature. Um, because it's something you can actually, like really, you can get your hands dirty, you can see these plants grow, they feed you, they provide physical sustenance, you know, and through that, you know, when we have a full belly, we can start to go deeper into things. And um, so we do design of, of not only gardens, but full landscapes, you know, because uh, a large part of our mission is that food can be grown outside of the context of, of a farm or, or a garden. You know, it can be incorporated yes. into our everyday landscapes. And there's this idea, you know, when people, especially here in the United States, think about growing food, they think about, you know, rows of vegetables on a farm, or they think about, you know, a raised bed garden that's, you know, regulated to some part of your yard that nobody can really see. And really, there's so many beautiful food plants that can be incorporated into our everyday landscapes. So a lot of our work is to try to incorporate that 
um, in the front yards, in the backyards, to the point where, you know, some of your neighbors might not even realize you're growing food yes. until they see you out there picking blueberries or apples. And they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that was, you know, an apple tree there. Um, so saying that food, growing food is beautiful. You know, it's not this weird thing that we need to put behind us because it's part of this past that we're trying to get away from. No, oh, it's, yes. it's part of what it means to be human. Absolutely. You know, we're, we've strayed away from being human beings. Now we're human doings. <laughs> doings, yes. So I want to, I want to put a garden in, and um, I, I always have wherever I lived. I always had my herbs, whether mm -hmm. even if it was just in a little pot, in a yeah. sunny spot in my kitchen. So it's not that difficult. But then there is, you know, there are some answers that I don't, some questions that I don't have answers for, and right. I can always look you up online, right? Mm -hmm. Even if I don't live in Asheville. <laughs> yeah. I do, but a lot of the viewers don't. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And because there's so many resources, we're just. We just, I think a lot of us just get so um, intimidated. Like you said, it's for farmers, it's for people who really know how to, I don't have green thumb, green thumb, so yeah. I'll kill my food. Then it's, I'm gonna even be more traumatized. Yeah, yeah, and, and see, I, I, whenever I hear people say, you know, I don't have a green thumb, I always say, you know, that's not true at all. It's a number of factors that have contributed to you thinking you don't have a green thumb. Yes. Everyone has a green thumb. You know, it, it could be that you've gotten, you know, low quality soil, which a lot of people do because that's what's being sold at most of the big box stores. You know, they're selling you bagged soil that has no life in it, um, that comes from probably raw resources that weren't that great to start with. Mm. And so when you try to put that plus probably low quality plants, you're kind of bound to not have a great experience. Yes. And so it's not you. Yes. It's it's what it's the 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 I the the products that are, yes. are being sold. Oh, it's you set to fail. That's terrible. Exactly. And then there's this idea that it is so difficult and, and so people go into it and they plant these plants with, oh gosh, they're probably going to die. Well, when you're thinking that <laughs> and you're planting that, you know, what do you yes. think is going to happen, you know? And so if you have good quality soil, good quality plants, and you're confident, I mean, it works. I think there's something, but you just said that confidence, which is also connection with that plant. Because my mom really? always says, you know, I, my mom says, I grow plants with love. You know, it's, yeah. it's I think, and this is again, this is how we are connected yep. with, 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 it's all part of the same creation. Yep. And when we allow ourselves that flow, then yeah. I, I believe we, be, we are part of the same system, That's right. same energy, same love that brings life, no matter if, you're, if it's a plant, really. Yeah. And, and there are some, uh, I know in Croatia, there are some communities that um, incorporate growing food as a part of addiction recovery process. Uh, yeah, healing. totally. We did a, um, a big project, actually one of our biggest projects to date at uh, Fort Campbell Military Base, which is near Clarksville, uh, Clarksville Tennessee, um, in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And it was a 8,000 square foot therapeutic garden for soldiers. Oh, beautiful. Because they're returning from war and pretty traumatized. And it's hard to find, it's hard to go back to a normal life once you've been in a war situation. And so this garden was A, to be a therapy uh, garden for these soldiers and B, to produce food for the cafeteria on base. Um, and it turned out to be a really beautiful space. Um, and hopefully it will help heal a lot of yes. soldiers coming back. So the same idea that growing food and being around a, a, an abundant, you know, um, abundant place full of flowers and scents and, and life and butterflies and bees and birds, you know, this helps us heal from whether it's, you know, depression, anxiety, or from, you know, post-traumatic stress from war. Yes. Music was the first thing for me that really connected me with divine, with some bigger knowledge of something bigger, of some bigger force, you know, mm -hmm. or, God, uh, however you want to call it, give the give it name, really was a it induced a strong awakening in me mm -hmm. and connection. And you are also a musician. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Which is just makes perfect sense. I am not surprised. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's it it provides that. Uh, a similar euphoric feeling to being in the forest, you know. Um, it's, it's that connection to something that, that our ancestors have been doing for, for millennia, you know. And talking about ancestry, you know, in, in, in our 
part of the world, Croatia, Serbia. We have, and Italy also, a lot of cultures. We eat and then we sing and dance. Mm. It's always connected. Yep. Always connected with any kind of life events. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of my favorite stories here, you know, in, especially in, in, in the southern United States. Uh, you know, square dancing came about. And one of the, the, the reasons for square dancing is because you would have a family build a home and then they would have at that time dirt floors and they would need to be tamped. Well, oh, wow. what's more fun, tamping, you know, or having a dance. And so they would call a dance inside the house and that would tamp the floor. I never knew that. And so people are having a good time but getting things done. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And you're going to play for us. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I want to challenge the viewers, you, to, to really go out. You don't have to go far. Mm -hmm. Even a city park will do. And connect and practice that. And through that practice, we promise, Jeremy and I, we yeah, guarantee I'm there, I promise. <laughs> there will be a shift in your own heart and soul. Thanks for watching and thank you, Jeremy. Thank, thank you. you. Play and share Jeremy's story or any other stories featured here on our show, visit us at wakingupinamerica.net and please join us on our Facebook group. See you next time. Thank you for watching.